Good morning and welcome to this edition of the uh, market analysis pre-market uh, for today, Friday, August 19th. I'm Giovanni Benacor, operator and educator with Vantage Markets. So here we go for Friday, TGIF. So the uh, dollar will stay strong and that spells more pain for companies. Investors need only to take a vacation this summer to understand the market exuberance back home. In Europe, there is drought, wildfires, and the cost of energy has soared. In China, residents and tourists are being caught up in shutdowns from a zero-tolerance policy toward fresh COVID-19 outbreaks. The knock-on on effect is stark. China's economy is forecast to grow at the lowest level for more than 40 years. In the UK, consumer confidence has sunk to a record low. The safe haven dollar is good news for travelers, buying 14% more on a London trip compared to a year ago and 16% more in Paris or Rome thanks to euro parity. Their greenback won't weaken soon as rates continue to tighten globally, delivering shocks to some economies such as Turkey. The US dollar index, which had eased as investors bet on a, on a slower pace of US interest rate rises, is up 1.9% this week alone. Federal Reserve minutes signal there is more to do to tackle inflation. The variables are how fast and how high officials should go. Their job has been made harder as the S&P 500 has powered 17% higher from its mid-June nadir. Confidence that the U.S. is doing better than the rest of the world comes despite some weak economic indicators, such as slow home sales. And it is worth noting the U.S. was the worst performing of the major G7 countries, the seven largest rich countries, in the second quarter, contracting by 0.2%. Some market bulls think global recession fears are overblown and that inflation will clearly up largely on its own. But the strong dollar will still feed through the blue ships regardless. Analysts at Morgan Stanley wrote last, last month that the 16% jump in the dollar at the time implied a fall of about 8% in the S&P 500 company earnings. Now, that will be no holiday. We're talking about being on holiday scenario, Saudi Arabia is on track for its fastest rate economic expansion in nearly a decade. High oil prices will likely help the kingdom to finish 2022 as one of the world's fastest growing economies, according to the International Monetary Fund. In a new report, the IMF forecasted Saudi Arabia's GDP to increase by 7.6% this year, just two years after it shrank by 3.4% during the pandemic. Saudi Arabia is likely to be one of the world's fastest growing economies this year as sweeping pro-business reforms and a sharp rise in oil prices and production power recovery from a pandemic-induced recession, the IMF said on Wednesday. Meanwhile, there's little domestically to suggest the U.S. can get anywhere near that level of economic productivity for the year. Recession talk abounds and the Fed continues to struggle against inflation. The IMF predicts U.S. inflation will average 6.6% through 2022 and drag into next year. Wednesday's forecast pegged U.S. GDP at 2.3% for the year, less than half of last year's growth and far below that of the oil-rich Saudis. And if we talk about European countries faring even worse, the dip in energy crisis in Europe is said to spark a series of steep economic contractions, according to analysts from energy aspects. So that being said, let's take a look at what we are seeing today uh, before the open. So we see that the market has really uh, retraced all of its all of its movements uh, that have been doing so far, coming back down, reaching our support level of thirteen thousand four hundred, breaking that support level. I've created a new support level of thirteen thousand three hundred fifty, but at the open, I'm more likely this that will be violated if not broken. 13,300 will be my next level of support. And from there, obviously, we continue to push lower. Uh, we could probably see 13,000 uh, as a bottom for today. The same wise as our friend in the S&P 500. Let me change this to two hours so we can see that fluctuation. So I'm, I'm looking at 4,227 as my support. Right now, we're having some... Uh, the, the market is looking to 
to stall or to to hold down to that movement, the lower movement to the 42-40 handle. But uh, let's just see at the open what will happen. Uh, Apple is one of the ones that is holding on to, is, is helping the S&P uh, sustain its losses. We have go, uh, crude oil here. Crude oil, uh, it, it, it flips right around my pivot point. Uh, the 86 dollar support level is yeah it's, it's way too low three dollars away from where we are right now but hey anything may happen i could probably be seeing the uh, crude oil coin back up to ninety dollars finding that resistance of, of my pivot point and then retracing back down to 80 89 probably just a, a, a very shallow channel to be trading for today uh not gas not gas i i think that not gas will continue to move higher uh, these are just movements of you no know, profit taking, uh, just tr uh, just trying to really to to sustain a market from rallying. But uh, any other negative news coming out of out of Europe will definitely jump, uh, you know, help fuel the movement towards the ten ten dollar handle, and from there perhaps fifteen dollars by the end of the year. Who knows? So here we go about gold. As long as the dollar in, uh, dollar continue to strengthen. Gold will will be receiving some of that valuation. Therefore, there's an in, inverted correlation between gold and the dollar index. So gold will, most likely will continue to move lower. 1740 is my support level. Should we break that level, we'll come back down to 17, 1700 as a psychological value. But looking to take out that lower, that low of of the 21 of, of July 21st, uh, 1680. That could probably happen if we continue, but not today. I, I I assume that we could probably will come down to 1740 today. And here we have silver. Silver is the same scenario coming, you know, making that that just sell off in, in, into the $19 support level. Most likely will happen at the open. Copper is the one that is sustaining its value right above our pivot point of 360, 3.68 uh, is our resistance. But I, I reckon I'm, I'm thinking uh, that copper it will it will do the this, this same movement this lateral movement that, we, that I'm circling right here it will do that here also as well. So here we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin has sold off strongly. Uh, something must have happened. It found that support at twenty one thousand two hundred and fifty, uh, but it's it's looking it's looking to continue to go lower. I will assume that 21,000 is will be my first uh, psychological level. I put 20,000 being a, a round number, but uh, 21,000 uh, is my first uh, support level on the Bitcoin. Here we have the Euro. Euro is really a parity with the dollar. Uh, I, I reckon it's going to continue uh, around this fluctuation above the one dollar, you know, right below my pivot point. A lateral movement, not much to be doing here. This is the one that uh, is going to uh, determine all the movements that I just said on the markets. Is the true the dollar index continue to is move higher, break our resistance level 108, our obviously our highest point of the July 14th will be coming out to be tested. That will be 10900. So take a you know be. Be uh, keep that in mind that uh, the dollar index makes another move to the upside. That will definitely happen. One hundred eight five hundred uh, could be our next level of resistance if we break that one hundred eight. And so, therefore, gold will most likely hit our seventeen forty support level. Well, this is it. This is Giovanni. I'll, I want to invite you to my next webinar coming up next Wednesday, twenty fourth of August at. 11 o'clock UK time. So you now be, uh, be uh, have you, your uh, candles ready. I'm going to be going over Fibonacci retracements and the Japanese candle stick patterns. A lot of them we're going to go over. Okay. So have a nice one, TJF, and I'll speak to you soon.